musical guest today is uh, Monty Colvin with a band called the Galactic Cowboys. And via Skype, we have him right now. Monty, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm here on my phone talking to you. Great. Live and, from Kansas City, Missouri. Great. And uh, truth be told, uh, you are actually a former Phoenix resident. Is that so? It is. I grew up in Phoenix. I went to grade school at uh, Creighton Grade School. Yeah. I think it's even still there. <laughs> and I was a big Phoenix Suns fan. Connie Hawkins. Wow. And Dick Van Arsdale. I'm old. Cool. So welcome to 30 IZ Videos, old, uh, Monty. We'll I'm go ahead and get started. Guy. We'll go ahead and get started right now, Monty. Um, the Galactic Cowboys recently reunited the original uh, four band members, and the new album you just released last month is called Long Way Back to the Moon. Uh, why don't you start by giving a little uh, background info on uh, when the reunion uh, decided to commence, when the reunion commenced, and a little background on the album, and why in 2017? Uh, well, we had been uh, actually, well, let's see, we broke up around 2000, and um, we uh, did some reunion shows, uh, I think about five, six years ago, maybe longer, and uh, every time we'd get together and do a reunion show, we'd always talk about, hey, we ought to do another album someday. And so a couple of years ago, I got a call from Mascot Records and uh, kind of a prog label, and they said, uh, hey, would you guys consider getting back together and uh, doing another album? And I said, yeah, I think so. And so I talked to the guys, and uh, we uh, did just that. And uh, it took us about a year to record, and uh, the album came out in uh, November. And uh, here it is. Great. Right there. Oh, how am I doing this? Okay. Great. And, uh, yeah, and Monty, also, too, um, what were um, some of your personal <laughs> favorites on the record? And uh, give us give us a little rundown of the uh, stories behind them, if you could, briefly. Some of the songs? Yeah, some of your personal favorites, that standout track. Oh, uh, well, the first, uh, <clears throat> the first track on the album is actually the first song uh, Al and I, the drummer, ever wrote together uh, when we started Galactic Cowboys. So... Uh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. Uh, we went back and listened to some of the old demos. And we said, Why does this never go on an album? Right. And uh, so we re-recorded that and put it on there. Uh, let's see. Another cool song is, uh, uh, let's see, uh, Blood in My Eyes. A lot of people are, are uh, liking that. Kind of a, uh, kind of almost, uh, you know, helmet needs. Uh, the Beatles or something, wow. you know, and um, that's a that's a fave of mine. Uh, we like to mix uh, a lot of melody with uh, you know some old thrash stuff and uh, uh, just metal and uh, rock and roll and uh, call it Galactic Cowboys. Yeah. And the Galactic Cowboys, Monty, you guys really do have lots of different influences, not just rock per se. I mean, you really there is a lot more diversity than what people might realize. Yeah, I mean, uh, we've all got different uh, influences. I grew up listening to, uh, you know, gospel quartet music and the Beatles. And then uh, in the 70s, I got into stuff like Kansas, Sin Lizzie, and Ted Nugent. And then in the 80s, when uh, thrash metal came along, I was like, wow, you know, Metallica, Megadeth, Anthrax. And I was totally into that. And, so uh, by the time uh, we started Galactic Cowboys, I just wanted to mix all that stuff together, and uh, I think we're kind of still doing that today. Right. Yeah, um, so uh, to let our viewers know, um, why don't you want to let, give a little background on the, the band members, and what, what do you say each member brings to the band? Well, Alan and I uh, have played together for, wow, a long time. We, we started back in the uh, late 80s uh, playing in a band together uh, it was called The Awful Truth. And we actually did an album for Metal Blade back then. But uh, when we split up, we started Galactic Cowboys. And uh, we found our singer, Ben, uh, playing in a cover band at the time. And... Uh, he fit right in, and uh, our guitarist, Dane, is 19, 
uh, when we started the band, and uh, he, uh, you know, he just uh, he just fits us really well. He left after our second album, but uh, bringing him back into the band now is just uh, has been really nice. We just all have a really good chemistry together, and uh, it just works really well with all the harmony vocals and the heavy guitars, and uh, it just works. Um, why don't we go? So, to talk about the beginning of the, of the Galactic Cowboys, why don't you go and describe the scene at the time when the Galactic Cowboys, when the debut record came out, and what what were you guys at the time? What were you guys um, uh, doing? Who were you guys playing with? Uh, any kind of some of the bands you guys toured with? What was the scene like at the time? Um, well, uh, it was kind of just the beginning of the 90s, and uh, to be honest, there wasn't a lot. I didn't think a lot like us, uh, and so it was kind of hard to find bands to tour with. Uh, we had the same management as King's Act, and so we did uh, several tours with them, and uh, their audience was really cool to us. But uh, the first tour we ever did uh, after the first album came out was with a band called Overkill, a uh, really heavy thrash band, and uh, their, their audience didn't take to us at all. They wow. didn't know what the hell was going on. And, uh, <laughs> it was like, you know, they were flipping us off and throwing stuff at us. And uh, so it was like, uh, get me out of here. Right. Uh, but uh, we've had other great tours. We, we did a tour with uh, Dream Theater in the early 90s uh, that was great. And uh, so, you know, and we also, uh, we went to Europe and uh, toured with Anthrax for a couple of months. And um, that that went pretty well, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, there was a lot of that, uh, you know. But uh, after our second album, the whole uh, the whole grunge thing hit, and uh, we were on the same label with Nirvana. Mm -hmm. And uh, as soon as they exploded with uh, their album, Nevermind, uh, the label just kind of put all their focus on them. And uh, we were kind of left behind, and so uh, we kind of had to uh, move on from there with Metal Blade Records, where we made about four more albums. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first time I saw Galactic Cowboys was uh, June 1992. You guys were opening again for your friends in King's X, and uh, here at the place called After the Gold Rush. I'm not sure if you're familiar with that as a Phoenix resident, but uh, you guys have played there yeah, in June I 19. Well, I, I remember that show. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that was. I always love coming back to Phoenix. Uh, we played uh, the Mason Jar right. a couple times. Oh, yeah. And uh, that was always a cool little club. Right. And, uh, yeah, I, I love coming back to uh, to Phoenix. Uh, my brother still lives there. And uh, I just uh, I really like that city. Yeah. Yeah, and, um, and different, like I said, I show you guys, the first song I heard from you was a song called I'm Not Amused. And uh, it... I saw that on the Headbangers Ball at the time, and basically that was for every you know hard rock fan who you know Saturday night was what they looked forward to, and um, right. And the Galactic Cowboys was interesting because you guys would when I first saw you guys were the last video of the night, and those who remember the Headbangers Ball know that it could be argued that some of the best videos of the night were always the third hour, and um, yeah. and I remember you guys ended the Headbangers Ball and they said, man, the song was just time changes and and everything but the kitchen sink in that song. Uh, what was the what are the origins of that song? Um, that was just one of the early songs that we wrote, and uh, I had all these heavy riffs, and uh, Alan came in, and I was playing it for him, and he's also a guitar player, and he uh, for some reason just started playing that you know uh, flamenco kind of guitar, right? And you know, back at the beginning of our band, we just uh, we would try anything. I mean, we were just like ready to experiment and uh, just be weird and funny and heavy and, you know, we just didn't care what anybody thought. Right. And uh, so a lot of uh, a lot of crazy songs came out of that time. And, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, I was a big fan of Headbangers Ball myself. I, I'd sit there on Saturday night, uh, you know, on Saturday night, uh, at, you know, 11 o'clock and right. midnight and stay up and watch Headbangers Ball because, you know, that was the only time you could see really, you know, metal 
on TV. And right. so uh, I was a fan of that show myself. And so it was really cool to finally, you know, be on the show. Right. Yeah, there was, um, and again, opening for King's X. Um, why don't we go back and talk a little bit about them? Um, what is the connection with you guys and King's X? And obviously, I'm sure you guys are still good friends to this day. Um, that tour was phenomenal. I mean, there was a, it was a, a good crowd, if I recall, and um, you guys got a great response with those guys. Um, it was just a breath of fresh air to uh, what you guys were doing at the time. How does the connection with King's X, um, what is the connection back for, for you guys? Well, I, uh, I actually met Doug when uh, King's X was basically just a cover band. Uh, when I met them, they were like doing covers. And um, wow. uh, we were all living in Springfield, Missouri. I was going to college at the time, and I met Doug, and we hung out. And, uh, and then uh, a few years later, uh, he, uh, well, let's see, uh, actually another guy had uh, said that, hey, you know, there's a good scene down here in uh, Houston. And so I ended up moving to Houston, and uh, so did Alan. And uh, we just, uh, you know, started playing in bands together. And once I was in The Awful Truth and Galactic Cowboys, uh, we had the same management. Uh, their manager at the time uh, wanted to work with us, too. And so mm -hmm. that's kind of how, you know, kind of that thing all started as far as us touring with them and, uh, you know, eventually being label mates on uh, Metal Blade. Right. Okay, um, just to remind our viewers, I'm uh, speaking with Monty Colvin, bass player for a band called Galactic Cowboys. They have a new album out called Long Way Back to the Moon. It, it is a, a reunion of the four original members, and record is available now. And um, we'll go ahead and um, continue the conversation with uh, Monty Colvin. Uh, Monty, is it safe to say we'll see another King's X Galactic Cowboys tour, possibly in 2018? Or what tour dates do you guys have planned, if any? Uh, I don't have anything planned right now. We're talking about uh, going out and doing some selected shows. Uh, I don't know that we're going to do any long tours mm -hmm. like we have in the past. Uh, but uh, we are going to try and get out and hit some of the major markets, you know, uh, L.A., New York, hopefully Phoenix, and uh, kind of uh, maybe do it in one-week shots, you know? Right. So... Um, We'll see, but uh, nothing really solid yet. I wish I could tell you some right. dates, but uh, there's really nothing yet. So just more select dates is the tentative plan? Yeah, right now. Right. That's, that's the deal. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, going back a little bit, who were who were some of you as a bass player, who were some of your early influences on you as, as, as a bass player? Um, I actually started out on guitar. Uh, mm -hmm. And uh, so a lot of my influences were, you know, Ted Nugent, Peter Frampton, and, and stuff like that. Yeah. But uh, I guess when I started playing bass, um, actually one of the first guys that really influenced me, strangely enough, um, well, obviously Doug Pennick, um, sure. you know, because I was friends with Doug. Right. And, uh, you know, he, he made bass so cool, you know, right. just his sound and everything. Agreed. Uh, but, uh, and he helped me a lot uh, when I was first starting uh, playing bass. But uh, one of the first guys that really, uh, you know, kind of sent me in a new direction was uh, Lemmy from Motorhead. Hmm. Um, I, I went to a Motorhead concert and uh, in between songs, he would just like strum his bass and it was just like the most massive you know, horrendous sound you've ever heard. Right. And I was just like, yeah, I, I've got to incorporate, you know, distortion and, and that that thing that uh, I got from guitar, that overdriven sound. And so yeah. I started messing with all kinds of distortions and uh, pedals and amps and guitar heads. And that's kind of, that's kind of what uh, started me with my sound. Right. Okay, um, what, I guess uh, a little more of a lighthearted question, uh, talking about your influences. Um, what was the very first concert you ever went to as a teen? Um, you know, the first concert I ever went to uh, was 
Patty East. Do you remember them? Yes. They, uh, they did uh, Never Been Any Reason. Correct. And, uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was probably in high school, and uh, my folks, you know, they wouldn't let me listen to rock and roll for, you know, until I was like 18. Uh, they kind of, it was kind of like this forbidden thing. They were uh, real religious, and uh, they kind of tried to keep me away from rock and roll, and I was always trying to sneak it in the house and everything. Right. Um, but, uh, yeah, my cousin was like, hey, how do you, how do you keep playing spring shows? You want to come down? And I'm like, hey, it's rock and roll. Yeah, I'm there. So, okay. <laughs> so yeah, they were the first concert I went to. And after that, I got into, you know, uh, I went to, uh, oh, I actually saw a really cool concert back in, uh, the late seventies that had REO Speedwagon. Headlining and the opener was uh, Richie Blackmore's Rainbow with Ronnie James Dio on wow. vocals. And uh, Blackmore smashed his guitar, and it was one of the greatest things I've ever seen. And so, yeah, I, <laughs> I've seen a a lifetime worth of concerts. Right. Everything um, from Ted Nugent and Metallica to you know, the new bands that come out today. So right. I've, I've seen a lot of stuff. Yeah. So, well, to that point, um, are there any uh, current artists who you give the thumbs up to um, currently? And uh, who are they? Um, I like I like a lot of the new bands. Uh, you know, of course, I love stuff like Kill Switch Engage. Um, I like, uh, you know, Mice and Men. Um Let's see. Uh, I love the new Mastodon album. Uh, I think it's brilliant um, and makes me want to go in and record a new album. <laughs> and uh, so, uh, a lot of that stuff. Yeah. And uh, the Wild Hearts. I don't know if you've ever heard of the Wild Hearts. Yes. But they're they're probably my favorite band of all time. Wow. And, uh, yeah, love them. What's the status on your um, solo band? I believe it's called Crunchy. Um, it's been described by some as more of a, there's pop and a little bit of punk. Um, what's the status on that right now? And, uh, will we, will we, will you be re revisiting that in the future? Um, yeah, it was a, a solo project basically where I, you know, played, wrote all the songs. I played most of the instruments except drums, sang all the vocals. So it's kind of a solo thing that I did. And, uh, yeah, it's, uh, yeah, it's got punk influences in it, uh, you know, and, and you know, more, it, it was probably more pop than um, right. Galactic at first. I, I kind of, by the, I've done three albums with Crunchy now, and right. the last one was a lot more Galactic-like, um, to where I was kind of getting back to the the harder edge stuff. Right. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's just kind of a, a fun solo thing. I don't, I... You know, I don't know what the future of it is, whether I'll do any more or not. Uh, right. You know, I, I hopefully will. Um, but uh, it's kind of on hiatus at the moment. But you can uh, you can still find those albums if you want on my website. Yeah. On Great. And, um, and this, on the new album, um, uh, Long Way Back to the Moon, the um, I, I presume all four of you guys wrote the material. There's no outside writers. Is that correct? Right, um, except for one song, uh, my wife actually uh, wrote some of the lyrics uh, for Internal Masquerade. Oh. Um, I, I wrote that, I wrote the music for that uh, about eight years ago when I first met her, and uh, we were just kind of dating, and uh, she said uh, that she had written some poems when she was in high school, and I said, oh, well, I'd like to read them, you know, and so uh, she sent me some of her, her words. And I'm like, man, this would make a cool song. And so I kind of incorporated her words into that song and on the verses. But uh, yeah. other than that, yeah, we uh, we all write, you know. And um, it was kind of a collaborative effort on this album. Right. Okay. And uh, one couple more things. Uh, the uh, what was the experience like making the two new videos um, off the new album? What was what? I'm sorry. Making the videos? 
the two uh, singles from the from the new album? What were they? No, um, how what was the experience making them? Um, give oh, us a little background, yeah. Okay, um, yeah, the first one, uh, we actually, uh, I went, I, I live in Kansas City, uh, I have to fly down whenever we, you know, do videos or anything like that, so right. I flew down, uh, the first time, and we shot, uh, Internal Masquerade, actually in the same, uh, house where we, uh, did the album at, mm-hmm. and then, um, it was kind of just a, uh, you know, uh, GoPro kind of, kind of video. Right. That we shot ourselves. Right. Uh, the second one um, was for the song Zombies. Yeah. And uh, we went down, uh, I went down to Houston. We was, uh, we, you know, shot the whole video. And then there was uh, apparently some technical problems with it. Uh, it was supposed to come out right before Halloween. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, which would have been perfect for a song called Zombies. Right. You know, but... Uh, uh, there were some problems, and we ended up having to reshoot the entire video. And so I had to go down again to do that one, and uh, again. And uh, but uh, for this one, you know, for zombies, we had some actors involved. We had a director, and you know, a professional cameraman, and all that. So right. uh, it's a little more, a little more high tech. Right. Well, that was a great a little story behind it because uh, we will be playing the video uh, for Zombies uh, on our station here, and you guys have the distinction. Awesome. Yeah, you guys have the distinction of being the uh, newest video uh, ever that we play on a classic music video channel. So we're going to try this out and see how that works. And so we're very honored to have you um, uh, have the Galactic Cowboys as our as a, a classic band playing a new song, and we're very honored to air it. Oh, well, thank you so much for playing it. Yeah. Uh, okay, well, um, just to remind our viewers, uh, we're speaking with Monty Colvin from the band Galactic Cowboys, and um, they just uh, released a, an excellent new album called Long Way Back to the Moon, and uh, we, you know, it's available on all the major major outlets, and please go to a nearby record store, because record stores do exist, they still exist, and um, Monty, anything you want to add before we um, uh, play the new video, anything, any other, anything you want to add? Uh, Oh, actually, I should ask you this. Um, you de- you designed the new album cover, and you've designed a couple of Galactic Cowboys album covers. Yeah, I, uh, you know, like I said, I was going to college in uh, Springfield, um, and I ended up getting a degree back then in painting, and uh, I wow. actually ended up doing more of the music than anything, but mm-hmm. uh, I've kept up my, you know, painting over mm-hmm. the years, and I've done a lot of our album covers, uh, our uh, T-shirt designs, and uh, and I did the new, uh, yeah, I did the new album cover and all the art in the in the package inside of it. Uh, yeah, were my paintings, and so uh, yeah, it's it's kind of cool to get to you know get my art out there at the same mm-hmm. time as the music. So yeah, and you Pretty also cool. sell uh, the, your art, your paintings on your website as well. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, anybody uh, wants to check out any of my stuff, I, I have stuff for sale on there. Yeah. And, uh, I'm glad to talk to you about it. Great. All righty. Well, um, I'll go ahead and let you go. Uh, uh, thank you so much for your time, Monty. And again, we're, we're, it's a pleasure and honor to speak to you. And this is much a pleasure and honor to be able to debut on our station, our Classic Music Video channel, a new video by a classic artist. So that's we're very excited about that. And um, thank you so much for your time. And when... We will be we'd be more than honored to uh, go ahead and spread the word when you guys come to Phoenix. Uh, we will definitely spread the word about the show. Right on, and if uh, you know anybody wants to uh, keep up with what's uh, going on with Galactic, you know, on Facebook, we're real easy to get a hold of. And I also have a podcast called Monty's Rockcast. Okay. So uh, you know, check it out and uh, be informed on all things Galactic. Sounds good. All right, thank you for your time, and uh, we apologize for the little technical difficulties we had, and thank you for your patience. No problem, man. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right, take care. Bye-bye. Bye.